Today I'm bringing you probably the best case study I've ever done on the channel is how we scaled this e-commerce brand from $550 a day in ad spend to over $14,000 a day in just under two weeks. So with that being said, stay tuned for today's video. You're not gonna wanna miss this. I go super in depth on how we made that happen and our learnings from that experience. My name is Justin and I'm the founder at Wizzle Media, an e-commerce marketing agency specializing in elevating thriving brands by simplifying e-commerce growth. So let's get straight into it. This is how we made it happen. So first of all, we brought this account from this. So on January 18th, 2023, they were at about sitting at around 2.9 ROAS. They were spending $556 a day, $1,600 in conversion value a day. You know, nothing too crazy. Good, decent results. Then to this, seven days later, so January 25th, 2023, to a 3.5 ROAS, spending about $1,800 a day and getting $6,500 in conversions during that day, to then that two weeks later, from the start so basically this is week one this is week number two at the end we were spending fourteen thousand two hundred ninety dollars a day and had 3.12 roas so how the hell did we make that happen what was the secret what worked what didn't work because look scaling that fast is not healthy there are a lot of things that break when scaling this fast so i want to show you in today's video what broke for that client and also what went well. So in total for that three or so week period where we were able to ride this wave, we spent $63,000 and uh, or $63,798 and brought back over $230,000 in purchase conversion value for total ROAS of 3.6. Just so that you guys know, this brand last year barely broke above a million dollar and that was accounting for wholesale and online revenue which were both honestly almost 50 50 so with that being said if you look at this 230k is more than 25 percent of what they made last year and we made that in under three weeks so honestly this was a crazy period for that client which again we're not ready to accommodate for that scale but we wrote the hell out of that wave and let's share my learnings with you so a bit of backstory to get started with we've been working with that brand since november 2021 we went through many different phases together we first were doing just facebook ads then we did facebook ads they had uh like basically their hero evergreen products um and then we figured out that their lower price products were getting a higher volume of acquisition so we kind of pivoted to that at some point then we introduced google then this was actually the first ever client that we were on triple well with which again we started at the uh, i believe it was tail end of 2021 or very early 2022 so that we got them on triple well so one thing that we figured out and again the beauty with that client is that we had time we had been with them for so long that we knew the ins and outs of the brand we knew how they worked and how you know what opportunities we could tap into so we figured out through time that high acquisition based products were based on trends which basically before i get into any of that i've recently watched the chew on this podcast from the guys at obvi which had some very interesting insights they were sharing that they figured out on their side that they have products that have very high LTV, but kind of low acquisition rate, whereas others have like a very good acquisition, but don't bring as much LTV. For that client, I'm talking about those products that bring a lot of acquisition. So a lot of volume of new customers. And those are trendy products. So context, this client is actually selling shirts that have like airport codes, city codes in the US. So therefore there's a lot of local aspect around that, which those products are their hero products. They work great and they work better for wholesale, usually within that brand. Now. Looking into that right here, we figured out that if we made shirts, hats, whatever, if we made products that were based on a trend, they would sell better. And we did that with a big celebrity last year that passed away, which that worked amazing as, you know, a trend. Um, again, we never specifically mention the person affected by that trend. So we never really go out and use a celebrity or use some form of trend, but we you'll see it in just the next few seconds on how we rode that current trend. Um, so basically sports, politics, holidays, etc., cetera, or work, work best for that client. So there's a lot of seasonality, lots of up and ups and downs, but we took a bet with the owner. So owner was like, look, let's make a, let's, let's essentially make ads around the Super Bowl and let's take a bet on the Eagles. Let's take a bet on, on Philly. And then we started running ads a little bit before we knew that they were going to make it to the semifinals. And then at some point they made it to the semifinals, which that caused the first boost in sales. So we're like, all right, 
good. That's great. There is an opportunity right there. And then we're kind of like laughing about it. We're like, hey, that's good. We got a lot more sales now. Let's wait until uh, we see what happens in the semifinals. And then they won the semifinals. And this is where it got crazy. So the quote unquote, as I say right here, nail in the coffin, because again, it was a positive scenario was when they won, which was going to bring them to the Super Bowl. So minutes after they won, we were back back during that period, me and one of our media buyers, which is actually the media buyer on that account, were both in Cape Town, South Africa. So it was like literally 12, I think 12 or like 1 a.m. at this point. It was like super late. We're just like, we see that basically the Eagles just won, bring them to the Super Bowl. We're like, holy shit, there's an opportunity right there. We need to get them to the ad account right now. And at that point, the budget for the day was scheduled to be a thing like 1500 to 2K during that day. We got 590 orders and literally probably 80 to 90 percent of those orders came minutes after they were announced to, to, to basically win or that they won the semifinals and that's they were going to go to the super bowl we got a lot of orders honestly this caught us by by surprise you know we we were watching the game just to make sure watching the stats to see that hey if something happened we were going to be fast to take an action so we scaled the budget to $6,800 during that first day, which was kind of the max we were able to. Super Bowl ended pretty late, right? So there's only a few hours left for the end of the day. That all happened within the last few hours of the evening. So with that said, 590 orders, just a crazy amount of orders for that clients, you know, just within that day. Just again, for comparison's sake, that's a little bit more than half of the volume they usually get in an entire month of orders that they got just like that within about two to three hours. So explanation right here, what broke during that period and right before i get into that i just actually want to go back to the backstory right here and like what we did literally all we did was put on a current trend like i don't want to say that we did something incredibly crazy is we were fast on hopping on a trend we spoke to the owner we're like look let's just take a trend right now let's figure out we know that you're a brand that works with trends and then he was like sure super bowl eagles bet on them let's just go with that trend we're like cool we follow them with that on ads and honestly we could say it was a bet but not gonna lie, knowing in the last year that every single time we had success with ads was true, basically some mass market trends, it was honestly a pretty safe bet. So what broke from that experience? Because let me tell you, a lot of things broke in there. And this is crazy because like I see so many clients uh, or, or prospects on, on sales calls and they're like, uh, you know, I always ask them the, the following question. I'm like, look, what's your goal right now with your brand? Like if, what would you consider a success if you were working with our team? And then they're like, Justin, man, I don't know, a million dollar a month, right? Or I want to scale super fast. I'm like, okay, sure. But like, what if it does happen? They're like, yeah, yeah, that's a happy problem. Trust me, it's not a happy problem. It sucks when you can still see that there's so much more potential that you can squeeze out of an opportunity, but you can't do the logistical reasons. And here, the reasons there was a lot why we weren't able to push that opportunity further than we did. So first of all, the first problem that occurred, Amex blocked their credit card. That happened two days, actually. So they'd happened twice that Amex blocked the credit card because spend was much harder than normal. So Amex was like, hey, this is honestly not normal activity. What's going on? So then the owner had to call Amex, figure this out. But that caused like very reduced ad spend for a day. Finally, they got it back up and then it got blocked again, which Again, pursue that problem for a second day. Called again Amex, or I don't know how he fixed that the second time, but then finally we got back up and running. And then miraculously, Facebook sent us an email during that time period saying, hey, we're gonna grant you 30 days payment terms. Owner was like, great, that's what I need right now. Fuck it, let me take it. So he accepted those terms, not knowing that this would result in restarting the account spending limit. It's as if Facebook kind of changed the payment uh, payment term or, or, or payment processor. And instead of being a card, it was like a new method of payments. And we were now limited to like spending a hundred bucks a day. So that took a solid three to four days to resolve, which is honestly very long, considering that we had a very short window of opportunity. So we were in talks with Facebook support. And while that was going on, actually the client was talking to Facebook support. We were talking to Facebook support on our side. We also had already planned a call with a partner that we had um, worked with in the past that could actually give out agency ad accounts without any limits. So the client know that like, look, if we weren't able to solve it with Facebook, we'd go into that account. And then when the time came, we're like, look, it's not resolved as of right now. Let's go into the new account. He's like, well, actually at this point, I can't fulfill. Like I, I don't have the capacity right now. Like it's, it's, we're just, we just have too many hoarders. I can't send them out. And I'm going to have like, I'm already having angry customers. They're stressed out. They don't know if they're going to get in time for the Super Bowl. So we're like, shit, we can't scale that up that much. So then it took, honestly, like if you, if you count of all these problems, there was a solid week 
right after, basically just a few days after they had won the semifinals. Um, there's basically that next week, like we could barely not do anything. Like we were able to scale them up for like the first two, three, four, five days. And then afterwards it was like, done. There's nothing for us to do. And then that, us, that, that got us, you know, very close to the Super Bowl. Then the owner added a page on the, the website. It said like, hey, basically you're not going to get it in time for the Super Bowl. So our ads performance just tanked. Conversion rate dramatically dropped on the website because again, it was the same amount of traffic. Just people were not converting because they're like, ah, oh, I want it for the Super Bowl, right? You want to rep your team. So honestly, a lot of things went wrong in that experience. But as the owner said, uh, when we you know talked to him after, it was kind of like happy that some of those stuff happened, or at least that's what I understood because it's like it was this big learning experience. It never really happened to have that big of a skill that fast with their brand. So it was a big learning experience to know like next time this happens because we hope it will happen again and we think that we can make it happen again honestly probably next year can be another great opportunity for us to tap into but without waiting for next year right there's a bunch of other events happening this year in the sports space and just in politics and in general it's about knowing on his end how can he prepare as a brand owner logistically speaking to handle scale and on our side what are some problems that we can foresee for our clients when scaling that fast like payment method blocking you know, blocking the payments from Facebook. So there's no way for us to actually keep on spending. Then that was very interesting. I did not know that if you actually switch and took Facebook's like payment terms, it would potentially reset your ad account spending limit, therefore limiting you in days like this where we're spending like multiple tens of thousands of dollars a day. So lots of learning curve to be done with that. So with that being said, some of the top performing assets that we had were the ones right here. So we build them around the football angle, but obviously we couldn't use their logo uh, we couldn't really talk about Super Bowl. Um, it was really about making that as generic as possible, but also making it so that people would figure out that we're talking about the Eagles. We didn't want to, you know, mess with like copyright or anything like that. So in that case, the first one was kind of like the spotlight on a football field as if this was a trophy. Second one, you could see like a football player in the back. Third one is like a stadium. Um, then we have these two, which as you can see, they're very simple ads, like very, very simple ads. It's just that as those were linked, to the trend, right? You could clearly see that those were linked to the, the, the colors of the Eagles. You can see the, those two here on the right. You can see an Eagle. Is this, it's not obviously the same Eagle. It's not the logo of the brand, but still we're talking clearly about the Eagles and people were still in the mindset of like, oh, Eagles are gonna, you know, Eagles are gonna go to the Super Bowl. We wanna support them. And right here, that was the copy that performed the best right here. Um, so fly Eagles fly, Hertz is our guy. Grab the fly apparel for 30% off today only. So in the end, once again, within those about two to three weeks of riding that wave, we spent $63,798 on ads and brought them back $233,000 and uh, purchase conversion value. We were only able to scan to scale above $10,000 a day for about three or four days before logistical reasons hit. All of that, like Amex blocking the payments and Facebook granting us the payment terms happened literally on day, I believe three or four of us scaling that budget. So it kind of sucks, honestly, that we weren't able to push it further than that. It is what it is. Once again, you live and you learn. And we're just happy that we got to have these crazy results for this clients. And I think they're also very happy to see that um, they got that many new customers because it was primarily all new customers during that time period. And with that being said, if you follow this case study, you like those results and you would want to speak to our team and potentially work with us, then check out the description down below and book in your own call with our team. Now, if you're not in a position to work yet with an agency because you're not making enough, we also mentor and do done with you with smaller e-commerce brands, which is also a link for that down below. And last but not least, regardless of your brand size, regardless of your industry, we have free Facebook group community, which again, I post exclusive content in there. I go live just for those group members and any questions that you have, you can ask me in there. So join that group down below in the description. And on that note, I'm going to see you in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.